I heard something uh, even before I left the house this morning. I was checking in to some of the, the, the morning news programs, and somebody commented that the reason Rex Tillerson has not been, no one has yet moved to confirm him as the next U.S. Secretary of State was because it can help. It was slowing any changes in the refugee resettlement program. Now, a lot of us here in Twin Falls know that this has been a big story, not only nationwide, but certainly here in Idaho over the course of the last couple of years, over concerns that some of the people who could be coming here could be potentially terrorists, you know, working in sleeper cells. And you even have, even the very liberal Christian Science Monitor said the other day in a story it did that, yes, there is the possibility that some of these people have also been coming here. These are Muslim terrorists, but coming here disguised as people from Mexico who are crossing the border. That's a liberal liberal publication that's saying that, and yet liberals keep saying it's an acceptable loss if somebody blows up your local grocery or mows down a bunch of people in the streets because it makes them feel better about themselves. They can tell each other how good they feel, and, well, these people work cheaply when you need your toilet scrubbed out. Tillerson's nomination has been slowed because liberals realize that a lot of these newcomers, well, it appeases liberal voters. It also creates new liberal voters, which they're always looking for those too as well. So this is the reason Mr. Trump today is taking these executive actions, and he is going to move to block refugee resettlement from a great many countries, Syria, Iraq, Iran, uh, Sudan, uh, Libya, Uh, There's a couple of other places on the map, too, as well. So the the refugee resettlement from these terrorist hotspots will be coming to an end. It's not necessarily going to eliminate every possibility, but it is severely going to at least uh, to reduce the potential, the potential, the odds and probability of something like that happening. Secondly, he's going to move forward with completing that fence, wall, whatever you want to call it, between the United States and Mexico. And the liberals are screaming bloody murder about this, even though a great many of the liberals who are screaming the loudest in Congress actually voted for this project 10 years ago, including Chuck Schumer. Uh, Some newspaper said today, some liberal newspaper, the Simps there, said today, Schumer is the new leader, the new champion is the word they use, champion of America's liberals. Man, if that macho guy is your champion, (laughs) no wonder you're losing all of these elections. Eric Erickson has this at the Resurgent today. The headline, Today President Trump will do the simplest of things, enforce existing immigration laws. President Obama failed to enforce those uh, those same laws over the last eight years, and he says, I am told the president will sign the executive order to proceed with construction of the wall. He will also suspend the refugee program, but not with a blanket ban on Muslims. Instead, he will prohibit immigration from terrorism hotspots around the world. And it says he's also going to crack the whip on sanctuary cities. And you know, these liberals in these sanctuary cities, they love sucking up all of that taxpayer cash in the form of federal aid. Well, it's going to dry up fast if you don't comply with federal law. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on KLIX. Go ahead. Well, one of the things I think that the world is literally knowing that this man is meaning everything he says, I noticed that right after his, uh, I think, the inauguration, there was some sort of a derogatory tweet or something from Merkel from Germany about some sort of a bumpy road. And, uh, you know, she's got her own road that she needs to clean up. And uh, she doesn't need to tell us what to do over here when she's living in a cesspool of a hell. You know, Germany is a, people have told me, I've never been there, what a gorgeous, beautiful, country it is and the people there are so you know tidy and they say that where these muslims are located and you know they are just destroying this country so merkel has to clean up her own mess if she's lucky enough to get reelected. but for our sake let's hope she's done well and you know I, here's the thing there's the old saying people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones i don't want to call her an old cow but you know um <clears throat> she's on the uh, the upper end of life, if you will. Here's the thing. We we keep hearing all these people tell us that the United States apparently owes the rest of the world a living. The Daily Signal has this today. There are 28 member countries of NATO. 
did you know they are required to all contribute a per percentage, basically, of their GDP to the common defense? Only five do. Germany and Canada are near the bottom of the list. In other words, we're paying for those people so they can build economies to club us over the head and then lecture us on their moral superiority. Well, I just don't think Mr. Trump is going to allow inefficiency anywhere, illogical thought anywhere. And, uh, you know, let's face it, this is going to be the most, you know, Reagan changed things, but Reagan was still a politician. Trump is a businessman, and that's how he approaches it. And uh, I'm just elated. Thanks, Bill. Thank you much for the call. This is, this is a, a, from the story from Daily Signal. Only five of NATO's 28 members, the U.S., Greece, Britain, Estonia, and Poland, meet the alliance's target of spending at least 2% of their gross domestic product on defense, a fact that is especially concerning. And the, the writer goes on to say, Greece, which is a basket case economically, is number two behind the United States at 2.38%. They're doing what they need to do. Germany and Canada, way below the agreement's mark, and then just essentially their scoff laws, and they're using the rest of their money, as I say, to uh, to prop up all of their social programs and refugee programs. We have another caller with us. Caller, you're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Well, there's no constitutional authority for any kind of foreign aid. And all these United Nations countries, you know, they suck up to us, and yet they vote against us. As long as we get the handout, that's great. And this has been going on forever. But you're... The thing that most people still haven't got through their heads or don't understand, don't want to realize that Islam is a theocracy it, hiding behind the religious facade. So everybody says, well, we need to be tolerant of other religions and so forth. But these people have a worldwide conquest as their goal. And so once they get to the numbers, and I could say Germany, your previous caller, you know, I, I, I've got my brother's been to Germany several times and uh, have German ancestors and so forth and came over here in 1903 to escape the ravages of socialism. But Merkel has just absolutely allowed all these people in there, and most of them are military age. And a lot of them coming here are bringing in, uh, they want Sharia law as soon as they get it because that's their goal. But I'm so glad that Trump is taking a stand on the wall. He's 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 done more in three days. I mean, he's already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. This guy, he's a ball of energy. He really is. He's a businessman. He understands economics. And yeah, he may not be the most uh, moral giant, but we didn't hire a pastor. We hired somebody to fix the problem Absolutely. Uh, and drain the swamp. So uh, he's doing that and he is he throttling the EPA. I hope he'll uh, be able to, maybe through our congressional people, stop the uh, $6 million that the little town of Filer, where I live, is going to spend $606,000 per household to lower arsenic from 10.5 to below 10. And it's based on no science. I mean, this is the kind of ridiculous stuff that's got to stop. Hey, thank you much for the call. Uh, this morning, I had to chuckle. Uh, Trump's got a good sense of humor throughout all of this. Fox and Friends was mentioning that they think they're watched at the White House. And the light was on in the White House residence kitchen. And so the host said, you know, if you're watching, uh, flip the lights. And all of a sudden, the lights in the kitchen started to go off and on. We have a caller with us. You're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Bill, you know what I'd really like to see is somebody in the, in the new administration pin all these senators and everything down to the wall on what happened with all the money that supposedly the bridges and stuff he wants to build now was supposed to have been done during Obama. And the wall that was authorized and twice had funding made for never happened. Where does that money go? Somebody needs to be accountable for that money. And let us know why we have to fund it all over again. And, and I thank you for the call. I, I'll put it this way. Uh, the money got spent uh, buying votes for Democrats elsewhere. That's what happened with it. Or it got spent on frivolous things like Solyndra and all of these other boondoggles 
uh, the government took uh, and threw money at in order to reinsure Democrats got reelected. That's what happened. That's what happened in those situations. 916, right now we've got 22. And you're up next. You're on KLIX. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, Bill, isn't this just the funnest thing that's ever happened in our lifetime? To <laughs> watch Donald Trump do what he's doing and watch these liberals' head explode? I think this is just the greatest, man. I do, too. Thank you for the call. I, I have to say that uh, there was a story out this morning that uh, the people at the Badlands Monument, uh, government employees were told that their their personal Twitter views were no longer going to be allowed on the Twitter sites that are controlled by the government, that is the Twitter pages. Yesterday, somebody at Badlands started tweeting about, this was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, multiple tweets about the climate change and concerns and, you know, and, oh, we self-loathing people here are responsible for it. And the planet is going to come to an end. I tell you, it's coming to an end, an end, if we don't change our ways. By 5.30, this started at 3 in the afternoon. By 5.30, the Twitter feed had been scrubbed. Why? Because somebody grabbed them by the short hairs and said, this is not the current government's policy. Therefore, you will not use the Twitter page, an official government Twitter page, to share your own personal views and values. Understood? And the Twitter page went blank. And all of the, those tweets vanished. 918, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I was bragging to Russell Singleton before he left the office that uh, I've lost 60 pounds on, uh, on the total body transformation system. Had a lot of callers, of course, about this recently who'd like to know more. And I'll put it this way. It is not a yo-yo diet. It is not a fad diet. It is a diet that is healthy. It, and doctors and health professionals have looked it over. In fact, some health professionals, I've mentioned one of my friends, she's on board with the diet and she's losing weight. The company that founded it has an A-plus business rating with the Better Business Bureau. It's been in business now over 20 years. And the Total Body Transformation System has been awarded two U.S. patents, one for reducing waist circumference and the other is for increasing metabolic rate and weight control. The system is scientifically proven to burn six times more fat and lose eight times more weight than normal results from diet and exercise alone. And the meal replacements are often healthier than your meals. Also, you can have a sustainable amount of calories. You can still eat the things that you like. Uh, you know, you could eat food for taste. That's another benefit of all of this. The average participant will drop 22 pounds and lose four inches off their waist in just 60 days. And I've been telling people, they've been asking me about cost. It's roughly the same. If you figure you're, you're using the meal replacement instead of you know eating those two meals per day that you're going to be skipping with a meal replacement, about the very same cost as buying those groceries for those two meals. So it's a zero-sum game is what I've been telling people as well. There's a full, unconditional money-back guarantee. And if you'd like to know more, you've got to call. Don Chandler, Marketing Executive Don Chandler. He's at 208-731-3560. Once again, Don Chandler at 731-3560. We've got more on the Trump phenomenon coming up in a couple of minutes. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com. Hey, we've got 20 at 920. The, uh, the, the left is angry because yesterday... During the press briefing, well, first of all, they were angry on Monday that the first question at the White House went to the New York Post, which is the only right-leaning newspaper in, in New York City, if not all of New York State. So they felt it's not right that they would call on somebody who isn't a member of a card-carrying member of the liberal media. And yesterday, Sean Spicer called on Life Zet which is the conservative site that is uh, owned and was launched by Laura Ingram. Oh, how dare they? Don't they know who we are? Yeah, you're a bunch of falling down drunks who stink. Try a little deodorant once in a while. Stop picking your nose and eating it. 923, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 22, and thank you for joining us this morning on Top Story. Just a quick note, this 22 degrees may be the high for the day. It's in that range. Over the next few nights, things are going to cool down considerably, and as we get toward the weekend, we'll be having overnight lows again in the single digits, perhaps even zero in some spots here in the valley. One more reason to remember uh, that that furnace has to at least get you through the next several months 
before we see some some really nice weather again. And if you have issues, you need to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric, located in Burley. Uh, the pros will come out, and they'll get the job done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winters are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678 0459. That's 678 0459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. So there's a fellow who writes for a magazine called Elite Magazine. I'd never heard of it before, but apparently he's part of the flaming liberal media elite at Elite Magazine. And he was appearing with, uh, with Tucker Carlson last night on the Fox News Channel and says he's advising his fellow travelers and media to no longer interview, no longer speak to Kelly and Conway. I interview people I disagree with all the time. I'm doing it right now. But I must say, in a lot of years of doing it, it has never occurred to me to shun them or to punish them by not talking to them. That doesn't seem like it would serve our viewers or your readers. Why would you do that? Well, first of all, let me just say that uh, my opinion does not represent uh, the official position of my company. This is my personal opinion. Um, but I think... You've been talking to lawyers. I love that. <laughs> uh, I think when we're talking about uh, having... Uh, constructive political discourse and disagreeing with somebody, there needs to be a basic agreement on the facts. Um, and she is spreading blatant lies. Uh, she's spreading what she called alternative facts. So how can I, we actually have a conversation and disagree in a healthy way if we're not going to agree on the basic facts, like the sky is blue, for example? Well, I mean, we don't agree on the basic facts about a lot of different things. I mean, you, that's part of what discourse is. It's arguing over what the facts are. And of course, you're not going to reach a place of agreement if you don't talk at all. And that's what you're suggesting. No talking, shunning, as you put it, which seems to me like a religious concept, not really a, a journalism idea. Well, uh, this administration is obviously desperate for attention, given they spent the entire weekend focusing on the petty issue of inauguration attendance. And I think they dominate headlines uh, by continuing this uh, charade of spreading alternative facts. And uh, behind the scenes, they do other things that arguably should be reported on, uh, but don't get enough attention. Um, I don't know if this is part of a larger sinister plan from the Trump administration. Wait a second. You just said that the Trump administration is desperate for attention. Yet, when the Trump administration calls on the New York Post at a news conference and they don't call on the, uh, the mainstream liberal media, then you guys all just, you know, you, you end up wetting your pants over this. Now, which one is it? If you don't want to give them any attention, then don't be worried about who they call on at a press conference. Sean Spicer, the, uh, the, the man in charge, of course, of those press briefings at the White House, was appearing with Hannity last night, and he thinks that this whole thing has gotten ridiculous because, you know what, when it comes right down to the number of how many people were at the inauguration, who knows? Who was there? One, two... Three, four. Nobody has a factual count. Nobody. We don't. We don't. Nobody has been chipped yet, so we can't tell how many people are standing there. You want to count the demonstrators too? In every case, he's defied the odds in one. And I think the interesting thing is, at some point, the the disposition should be he's going to do it unless we can prove otherwise. He has shown through every step of the way that he's going to win. And so it just seems to me it's odd that if that those are the odds, if you're looking at his track record. The track record is a proven track record of success in winning, and yet the media's default is on every scenario, whether it's his nominees getting through or him winning a primary or him accomplishing something, it's immediately a negative and a failure. Yeah, and uh, this is the same media that looks at the aerial pictures and says, oh, there weren't that many people there. But as I said earlier, uh, eight years ago when I was at one of the Tea Party rallies in Washington and there were close to two million people there, they ignored the aerial photographs. So who's spreading fake news and not sharing the true facts here? You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top, St uh, top Story at 927. I've got an alternative fact for you. I've seen the sky from Earth, and it looks blue. I've seen the sky from the space, and it's clear. So the sky is clear. <laughs> yeah, uh, at least some days it is. <clears throat> Lately, it's been filled with clouds and snow. Thank you much for the telephone call. But, yeah, Spicer is getting in on this numbers game. Where are their facts? Because I got called a liar for something that I can add up and say, here's how we come up with this number. And yet, where's the number that disproves that I'm wrong? And, again, I bring up that old joke, you know, when they had those so-called couple million people out for Mr. Obama's first inauguration. 
uh, the old joke, only 14 of them missed work. Well, Washington is an overwhelmingly black city. In fact, the corridor all the way up to Baltimore is an overwhelmingly black city. There are millions of people who live in that area. They didn't have far to go for the inauguration. On the other hand, we don't know how many people were really watching on TV. You have some estimates from these metered markets, and they try to extrapolate. But none of this is ever, I mean, definitive science. And if you weren't counting there, you weren't standing with a clicker, nobody had to pass through a, through a, a, un, underneath a great big, remember in Blazing Saddles when they put the toll booth out in the middle of the desert? You didn't have to pass through one of those to go into this thing. One, two, three, four, five. I'll tell you what, mainstream media. Reminds me of the old lizards in Land of the Lost. It's critical that we continue to speak about Sessions' role as Attorney General, his record here in the state of Alabama on civil rights issues, and his voting record as our senator on civil rights issues. This is from a protest going on in Alabama where they're angry about Jeff Sessions, and she's repeating all this. Oh, his, his poor record. Well, what is it? Oh, it's poor. Cite some examples. Oh, well, a guy who, uh, who was a lunatic back in the 1980s said Sessions said bad things. Where's the lunatic today? Oh, well, we haven't talked to him. Mm -hmm. but, but the Democrat National Committee sent me a note here and said, these are my talking points, just to keep saying Sessions is a bad, bad man. Again, why is he bad? Because he's bad. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what Debbie Wasserman Schultz told me to say and, 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 and Sally Boynton-Brown. Yeah. we got more on this subject coming up. It's 9.30. It's 20.